Our goal with the class was really to have the students have a, a hands-on design process. They worked on assembling everything, so they did everything from gear ratios, they had their own little gear boxes. Uh, we, we told them actually which gear ratios to use at first, but later on they had to think about uh, how they might change that. We had them start everything from soldering their, their own printed circuit board and putting all those components on there. Here you have the one that connects from A5 over here. Just cut off, snip off a little bit, bend them down more, and then okay. solder it. And they put the whole robot together, made sure it, it could drive. Then to designing in SolidWorks, which is a, a 3D computer uh, aided design program, the chassis of the robot, so the main body of the robot, and then they printed that on the 3D printer here. So when you close it, what voltage do you have here? Uh, zero. Zero, and so is the LED on or off? Off. Off, because there's zero volts on your side? Yeah. Okay. All along they were working on computer programming that would, would allow it to do what they wanted it to do. Uh, so they, when they went to test it, they could actually upload a program to, to their board, and, which we called the, the Mudwino, which is based on the, the Arduino board. And then they worked some with sensors as well. So they had a reflectance sensor underneath so they could train the robot to follow a line. We've been here for about six hours to get the wall follow to work. And it was working earlier, but unfortunately it's not working right now. And one of the hardest things is that the distance sensors have a certain threshold where they won't work anymore because um, it's too close. And um, the infrared signal, um, it's too close for it to go out and bounce back and it to tell the difference from where it is. So we're trying to overcome that by keeping it outside of that barrier. So farther from the wall as opposed to closer to the wall. And some of them have no idea, like, they could care less what voltage or current or resistor was, or a fuel cell and hydrogen, they're like, what in the world is that? And then now they're kind of have a little more intuition. We tried to look at some things that would be very useful for first semester students. So one of the things we focused on is giving them a sense of, of what engineers and computer scientists really do. So that was one of our, our goals with the class. They didn't just design, but it's, it was a design, test, debug sort of rotation. So they didn't just build something and say, isn't that nice? They built it, and if it didn't work, they had to keep working on that and make, make sure it did because they wanted it to compete successfully. They took all the information they had to program it to run for the final challenge where they had the capture the flag style game. We started out with four beacons claimed for one team and four beacons for the other team. The audience knew which team they belonged to because of colored LEDs, but in fact the robots were looking at something called gold codes, and gold codes are used for, for GPS positioning and other things, but basically they're putting out some sort of signal and the robot could actually read the signal and then they had to use some pretty pretty interesting techniques to process that signal, uh, figure out whether or not that beacon was claimed for their team or not, and if it was claimed for the other team, they needed to go and program their robot somehow to go and, and claim that for their team. What we've come up with is like we've had students who try wall following algorithms, people who've done clever things with like their line following things and spoofing beacons so that they could pretend to be a beacon so other bots will look for them instead of going for the actual beacon. And all of these really, really clever things that I never, at least I know I wouldn't have been able to come up with on my own. Someone even has an airsoft gun that they attach to their robot. So instead of driving up and hitting it, they shoot the gun and the pellet actually is strong enough to hit the button and depress it and change the gold code. There were some teams that decided they wanted to claim the beacons basically by just driving around the board and not worrying about whose beacon it was claimed. Uh, that was not as effective as a strategy as some people who found they added extra sensors on the side of their robot and they found that worked very well to follow along the edge of, of the game board and then they got whenever they got to a beacon they would look at it and they would check, they would read this gold code and see okay is this the code for my team or for the other team and if it's for the other team I'm going to claim it for my team and, and so on.
On in three, two, one.
that concludes our event. Thank you all very much for coming out, and we hope to see you next year.